changes to perfect match include the addition of a new command called snap which you'll see at the top here um, it also uh, we've changed the way that the movement commands work and this includes the snap command movement commands are now modal modal means they stay selected until you hit escape or select another command so for instance if I select horizontal each time I click on a line um, it'll make that line horizontal and I don't need to select the horizontal button again or hit the on key. Um, you'll also see that we've moved the reserved area to the bottom of the list of, of uh, commands. And you'll notice that there is no bump margin in the layer manager. Bump margin now is always available by selecting the alt key. If I pick a countertop and I hit the alt key, you will see the bump margin. Now we'll come on to the new command, snap. To enter the snap command, you either hit the A key or click the button. I'll click the button in this case. And you'll notice that I have an, a tooltip that says click and drag a line to snap and alt to bump. Uses the part offset distance. My part offset distance is currently one. So if I select the line, and that's what you do, you select the line and you move it near another line and it will snap to the line. Furthermore, it will tell you what it's snapping to. Uh, here I'm dragging a long line, but once I get to a snap point, it shows us a snap point. In this case, it's aligning the end of that island with the end of the countertop. Um, if I am moving it along any particular line, you'll see it doesn't matter anywhere you put it. You can move it across any particular part, and it will find a way to line up. But if I hold the Alt key down, that will allow me to do things like bump into a corner while maintaining the line. In fact, it doesn't matter what angle that line is at. If we move this to an odd angle and I come back and I hold the alt key, now you'll see I can slide along that snapped line. So the trick is snap first, hold the alt key, and then slide along the line. Now we said a moment ago that this is uh, this part offset distance is the new uh, distance for things like common line or things like snap. The saw curve is still used. If you get closer than the saw curve, it will turn countertops red. Um, but for the actual setting of how these commands work, you use the part offset distance. And that can be any distance you like. For instance, I just set it to four inches. So you saw some things turn red because they were closer than four inches. I'm still in the snap mode. And now you see I'm snapping four inches away. Or if I hold the Alt key, you can see what the current bump margin is. So let's look at the end result of this. I'm going to switch back to the saw blade uh, thickness for the part offset. I'm going to hit the H key and make that countertop horizontal. Then I'm going to turn on snap mode. And well, first I'm going to rotate that 180 degrees. Then I'm going to turn on snap mode. Snap things, the saw blade apart. Hold my Alt key, bump into the corner, grab these, snap them to where they go. And that's how fast things can be nested. And now we'll talk about changes to the slab manager and the job manager. I'll begin by opening the slab manager. And I want to point out there are some new properties. One is on hold, one is consignment, and one is distributor. The on hold and consignment are checkboxes. So I can do things like say, show me all my slabs that are on consignment. Or I could say, show me all my slabs that are on hold. Now you'll notice when I do that, some of these slabs, these slabs that are on hold tell me how long they've been on hold. Uh, if they were just put on hold, it will simply have an H. If they're over one week, it'll tell you. And if it's over two weeks, it will tell you. You can further sort by the dates. So if I slide over to the on hold date, I can order them by date and I can see that these are the oldest slabs here. They were put in on hold on 519 and I can check what that was used in. It was used in job 211. Um, I can open job manager from here, but we'll do that in a moment to see who the customer was that I may need to call. For now, let's talk about how we put a slab on hold. So I'm going to clear our query. I'm going to tell it to show me all slabs. And uh, Let's find some slabs to put on hold. 
Um, I need to put some, let's put Bordeaux Montana on hold. What have I got? I've got these two slabs. I'm going to put these on hold for Mrs. Smith. I select the slabs. I click the save box. It's got a job ID. I'll call the job description the Smith Kitchen. This is going to be check this box to put it on hold. I'll give it a name. Jane Smith is the customer. Um, and she's, you know, I can answer her phone number or whatever I need to there. So, phone number. And I'm going to go ahead and save the customer with that job. Now, once I do that, you'll see that that puts on the little hold, hold icon. If I go back to my search and clear, and tell it to show me only slabs on hold, there they are. Now, let's take a look at those. If I click on one, I can see that's been put on hold recently. It's certainly under a week, or it would have told me it was over a week. Um, I'm going to go look at the job. It's job ID 251, Smith Kitchen. Let's go look at that in the job manager. In the job manager, we can see that let's select the Smith Kitchen. It contains these two slabs, 8138 and 8139. It's for Jane Smith. And there's a new hold checkbox in the job manager. This tells me that that job is a job that's on hold. In fact, if I'd like, I can tell it to show me only jobs that are on hold. So these are jobs that haven't been, uh, we haven't received a, a firm commitment from yet. But it's gathered the slabs in one spot and we can sort by all the slab, all of the jobs that are on hold. We can just as easily say, don't show me any jobs on hold by unchecking that box. And now none of the jobs, these are all active jobs that are real jobs. Let's talk about how we would convert a hold job into a real job. So the Smith Kitchen, she called up. She said, it's, uh, I do want that uh, those slabs, let's begin the job. All I do is come into the job manager and uncheck it and now it becomes a regular job. Furthermore, let's suppose that she called up and said, no, I've decided I don't want those two slabs. All we need to do is delete the job, which I'm doing now. And now if I go back to the slab manager, we will see that if I check my slabs on hold, those are not in there anymore. In fact, if I go look up my Bordeaux Montana, I'll see that they've been released back to inventory or no longer on hold or associated with the job. In the Slab Maker, when creating multiple slabs from a single image, or in this case, from a blank slab, when multiple slabs are created, you're able to edit individual slab IDs or properties for individual slab IDs. And this is true of all properties, not just the lot number, um, any property you'd like. And you can see now I have changed the lot number differently on different slabs. When that's saved, they will retain those separate properties for each slab. A new compact style of saw pick ticket has been added that does not include slab images. This provides the space for jobs with many slabs to be included on a single ticket. Updates to the calibration engine and the interface allow for the error checking of camera movement and lighting changes across more than a single calibration thickness.